I don't quite know how else to tell you this. Um, I guess I'll just jump right into it. Um, those of you who, who know me know that I have a love for two things. Uh, number one, um, the, uh, the Eddas, because I'm, uh, I'm of course, uh, practicing heathen, and on top of that, role-playing games, Ta particularly tabletop role-playing games. I love those two things. And it was while, um, I think about a year ago, I was sitting in our telegram with the tribe of the Greyhorn Pagans. We were talking about, you know, we were presenting stuff that we've researched. Uh, for our Thane, Josh, his thing is uh, giants. He loves researching uh, giants in our uh, respective cultures and showing uh, these, you know, rather gargantuan skeletons. And he's, he's actually been, uh, like myself, he's been on our tribal podcast talking about those skeletons. And talking about giants in particular, uh, whether in folklore or, you know, in uh, stories or whatever. I've been on there talking about tabletop role-playing games. Uh, Stein, our Jarl, and our fearless leader has been talking about Tartaria. And we have all these, uh, We it's, it's not just Norse pagans and heathens in particular in that group. We have people from just about every walk of life you can imagine. Uh, we have had Christians stop in and uh, talk to us. Most of them have been very respectful. Uh, we've had we've had people who are uh, Jainist, Buddhist, Hindu, so on and so forth, and an actually diverse group of people, diverse in religion, diverse in uh, skin color, diverse in thought. And we've been able to handle pretty much just about anything. And I, it occurred to me that I see uh, tabletop role-playing games as a means of keeping storytelling alive. And when I say storytelling, I'm talking folklore. Uh, folklore happens to be one of my biggest things. Folklore, fairy tales, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it it's, it's very big with me. I, I, I absolutely love it. If someone were to give me a book of uh, you know, fairy tales by the Brothers Grimm, I would just, I'd be elated. That's just the kind of guy I am. Anything with stories in it, I don't care where they're from. I, I just, I love stories. I love collecting stories. I love, t I love people when people tell me stories. Uh, you know, and role-playing games are our means of crafting stories and exploring stories, exploring cultures. Um, and, of course, reminding us um, of what the past looks like even in a in a mythological sense and it occurred to me why not use a tabletop rpg to explore these kinds of things maybe encourage some of the younger generation to get involved and so i proposed the idea of greyhorn which would be i name i purposefully named the tabletop rpg after the group and wouldn't you know it, you know, instead of showing you a blank patch there, my bad, uh, they were all on board. They, they loved the idea. So I, that's why I really began in earnest looking, you know, going back into them. And I'm looking at all different kind of rule systems, all different kind of dice systems, you know, hanging with, hanging with some people who actually actively create them and churn them out in unbelievably fast ways it, it's just amazing to me how some people can turn these out how how just absolutely talented some of these people are and tonight i have to do something that is uh both it, it both pains me and fills me with joy how can how can it do both well let's get the painful part out of the way let's rip this band-aid right off uh, the tabletop RPG that I had proposed doing, and I had some ideas, I've been compiling notes for a little while, uh, it's actually already been done. 
and, and to be to be honest, uh, the impetus for this got started when we were discussing a rather uh, controversial figure <laughs> and the role playing game that this controversial figure has created. Um, I have looked at two editions of this rather controversial game. And unfortunately, I, when I looked at it, I had to wonder where, where this figure got some of their information. And I thought, I said, I, we, we could do that better. We could do it so much better. The, uh, the information that gets brought to the table in the tribe is just second to none. And so that's why I proposed the idea. I was like, we could do, we could do this better. It's a little 200 page book. You know, we could do that so much better. And so that's what I set out to do. And Troll Lord Games already did it, already did it better. And that's the painful part is I have to, I have to concede this. I, I really do. I have to concede this, but, um, there, there's another idea that I had, and I said, if this does well, then I'm going to go with this other idea and really kind of wrap it all together. I think I'm just going to go with that idea and wrap it all together. But here's what they did. Let me show you. Okay, are you ready for this? Because I think you're going to absolutely uh, enjoy this when I show it to you. Doesn't seem like it wanted to, uh, there we go. Let's do it that way. Okay. Hope you're ready. There we go. There we are. There it is. Codex Nordica. The initial idea behind Greyhorn was to start it in scan, in a sort of a mythical analog of Scandinavia and then move it down into Europe move out toward Atlantis, and then uh, and in the presentation say, guess what? You can do it too. And with that book in your hands, now you can take out all the cultural stuff that I threw in, put your own in, and bring it to, bring it to the table and say, here's what we have. And hopefully you've learned something about you know, your ancestry, your culture, whether you have a mix like I do, or whether you have maybe just one or two. You know, if, if you're of Italian descent, you can do it. If you're of uh, Polish or Slavic descent, you can do it. If you're of African descent, you can do it. If you're of Chinese, Japanese descent, you can do it. It, it didn't matter who you were, where you were from. Uh, to give you an example, uh, the basic expert, John Torres, he is actually doing a, a, an Aztec game. He's still working on it. And so that, that's really what I wanted to inspire. But it seems that it's, the more I look around, the more I realize it's, it's already being done. People are exploring their cultures and, and bringing it to the table. Um, Troll Lord Games is actually doing it really, really well. They've done it very respectfully with Codex Nordica, and I'm just going to kind of thumb through the uh, digital file I have here. Uh, Brian Young is um, the author of this, and uh, the entire crew that's here really just did really well. So I, I really want to applaud them and say, of course, thank you. Thank you for doing this, because uh, I went through about 115 to 120 pages of this just like thumbing through it and just looking at it and realizing, holy crap, it's already been done. You guys at Troll Lord Games gave me something I could take to the tribe itself and say, guys, ladies and gentlemen, look at what we have here. We already have a means of going back in time through a role-playing game. And we can look at this ourselves, and we can do this. So, I know Castles, uh, the uh, the men and women at Castles and Crusades like to say that once you open the book, you're already home. 
They're not kidding. So, how can you play? Well, that's one thing I forgot to mention in my last uh, podcast on free-to-play games. Free-to-play games, forgot to mention this. Let me show you something. Boom, right here. The Player's Handbook for Free in PDF. That means you can play this for free. And yes, this is a full player's handbook. This is not like a, this is not like just uh, just the basic rules like what uh, Fifth Edition D and D did for you. This is a full player's handbook because they are so confident that if they give you an electronic version of the of the player's handbook, you will buy the player's handbook. They're not kidding. Uh, let me tell you something. After like getting about halfway through this, that's when I pulled the trigger, and I got, you know, I'm a DM, so. I well, I'm a GM. I'm I got the player's handbook, the Castle Keeper's Guide, and the Monsters and Treasures book, and then they sent me a DM screen and uh, an adventure. So there it is. If it's free, it's for me, right? There, there you go. Go ahead and grab it. I I, I do recommend the system. The system is awesome, and Troll Lord Games is awesome as well. Also, there's this, the Bag of Holding. Castles and Crusades, quick start rules. So you have the Wizard's Tower with basic rule set. So this is kind of like a little bit of, it's a little bitty adventure. So you get the player's handbook in this, and bang, you've already got a game. You've got fillable uh, character reference sheets. You can convert things from 5th edition to Castles and Crusades right here with the Slaying the Dragon. Amazing Adventures Quick Start, so you can uh, you can start playing Amazing Adventures. Also, one other thing I should mention. Let's talk about Amazing Adventures for a second. Let's see if they have, if they still have it. Because this is something I think every one of you should look at. Especially if you like, uh, well, we've, we've covered it before, Amazing Adventures. If you really want to a game that can go anywhere and do anything. I think Amazing Adventures works. But, let's see, what is this? Okay, that's something for later. Look at that, 10 available. 10 of those things available you can get in print. That is, it's a, it's a pretty nice book. They are going to be doing a Kickstarter for a new one pretty soon. This is by Jason Bay. But Amazing Adventures is... A system I would, I mean, look at it, 10 bucks. You can't go wrong, and you can do anything with it. Plus, when you combine it with this bag of holding, Quick Start, you also have the character sheet, free downloads. I mean, look, the books on Troll, on Troll Lord Games are not expensive, ladies and gentlemen. These are not $50 a pop Wizards of the Coast books that'll fall apart on you these are these are good also the mythical mythological books you got codex uh codex keltarum codex nordica codex germania i actually got these two uh nordica and germania i got both of them codex egyptium codex classicum which is greek codex slavorum which is obviously slavic uh, Gods and Legends, I really do want that book. <laughs> That's going to be on my list. Look at that. There you go. They're already doing cultural role play right here. And then they have this. The uh, Kickstarter, which has nine days to go. As you can see, they only wanted $1,000. They blew that out of the water. They got 50, almost 16 times that amount. And right now, it's only 35 bucks. 35 bucks, and you get entered into a raffle for a $500 shopping spree on Troll Lord, $250 shopping spree, $100 shopping spree. 35 bucks, and you get entered. You get Codex Sonarum Digital and Print. Estimated delivery next year, but there you go. The rest is for like, uh, oof, 
goodness. $150 you can get a digital print and a leather edition. Jeez. I would I would just say throw throw them 35 bucks and back it. I'm telling you right now. Explore ancient China. That's exactly what this is. So You got the fantastical wuxia and the shamanic uh, shinsha religion. Martial arts are wushu, and many strange and bizarre beasts and supernatural beings derived from ancient lore. All can be discovered within the Codex Sinarum. The complexities of early Chinese civilization is presented in an easy-to-read, playable form. The Codex Sinarum, its grandeur, history, and myth are celebrated and brought to you and your Castles and Crusades game. There you go. Why would you not? But I think this video is running just a little longer than I'd like. I wanted to just say um, thank you, Troll Lord Games. Once again, uh, <laughs> Troll Lord Games, they are surprising me every day, and they are nothing but pleasant surprises. Um, I'm not mad. I'm not at all. I still have the uh, the seeds from the idea that I wanted to do before. So guess what? I may just do them. May do it in like a just a little campaign. Might do it as an amazing adventures campaign. You never know. Let let's hack these books together, right? Love that kind of thing. Anyway, there won't be a um, there won't be a reading. A straight Terror Tuesday reading because, quite frankly, I have to get up super early. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this. I'm going to call it a night right now. Get this cut and sent out to you. I just wanted to say, uh, you know, I can't believe you guys beat me to the punch, but you did. And guess what? I have to congratulate you for it. Troll Lord Games. Love you guys. You guys are awesome. What can I say? I'm singing your praises because <laughs> you, you bloody well earned it. All right. So anyway, it's your boy Raven saying love you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. <laughs> Thank you for listening to me ramble. Take care of yourselves and each other. Always play what lights you up. And as always, you know what to do. Play on.